Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Initial DIY Mods. Today we're going to be taking apart our DSM 5-speed 4G63 all-wheel drive transmission. It's pretty similar for the Evo and for the front-wheel drive transmission, but there's a few little subtle differences. We're only going to go into the all-wheel drive variant today. This comes out of the all-wheel drive Mini Cooper swap that we've done. Check out those videos here in the card. Please share it with your friends as well. I'm sure that they love cars just as much as you, so they'll be interested in seeing this as well. Now let's get to this transmission. Picking up where we left off, we're gonna start with the intermediate shaft. So we're gonna take off this snap ring. Now this thing is a pain. I recommend better than just generic auto part snap ring pliers. You're gonna really fight with this thing. I'm probably gonna destroy it on the way out. You can't reuse them regardless of how you remove them, so you might as well destroy them on the way out anyway. But look at that thing, just gone. So now we've moved over to the shop press. We are going to be using a 19 millimeter bearing as our spacer and a bearing separator tool that we got, or a gear separator tool from Harbor Freight. Basically tightening it around to get it snug, but we're not going to try and clamp it because we're working on gears here. We don't want to break any of the teeth. These should not take a whole lot of pressure to come out. You don't need a 20 ton press for this. Now this transmission had a shift fork failure and these are a bunch of chunks that are left over. They're gonna be found inside all these gears absolutely all over the place. This is why you don't wanna keep driving. These chunks are gonna to continue to be ground throughout the transmission, destroying all of your bearings. All right, so we're pulling off first gear here. You can take off the bearing, take off the uh, inner bearing retainer. So we have the tapered bearing on the outside and the roller bearing on the inside. This is how the synchro works. This is the hub assembly with reverse on it. And we can see that first gear spins freely. And then as we press that in, it locks into place. And that's essentially how we're, we're able to spin the, uh, the shafts of the transmission together. Now there's our synchro inside the hub assembly. And you really want to take some time to play with your gears, play with your transmission while it's apart like this. It's a great time to learn how everything works. Now we're removing the next gear in the set, which is going to be second gear. Now you can see here that all the oil galleys, these little plugs in here, all these spots are actually filled with aluminum shavings. So there's not a lot of lubrication going to these bearings. And that's really going to have them uh, basically overheat and get destroyed very, very quickly. We're going to throw everything into their own little baggies. We're going to label everything just to keep everything nice and organized. And it might help us later on when we're putting everything back together. Now switching to the input shaft. We're putting on another bearing separating tool now. And this one we're tightening up a little bit more to try and get one of the, the races off here. We're gonna go ahead and press this off. Now these really don't take a lot of force. Again, a small press will, will make this work. You'll wanna slide this out, have a good hold on it. It is pretty heavy. And we can actually take a look now. You're seeing we're getting a lot more chunks coming out. This is gonna be a pretty common theme here. Again, this is why if you ever have a failure in your transmission or your engine for that matter, you don't keep running it. Switching back to the, or switching to the input shaft, we're gonna be taking off some of these snap rings inside here. Now this holds the taper roller bearing on. Now this one's a little awkward to get into. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we're very careful not to damage the transmissions, the gear teeth, or else we end up having to buy new gears entirely. We're gonna set up right behind fourth gear. And we're going to go ahead and press it off. And the whole assembly is going to come out. Got another tapered ro or another roller bearing here, needle bearing. This one's pretty much destroyed. It's, there's a lot of bronzing inside where it's kind of overheating and stuff. Here's what the inside looks like. You can see this whole area is basically destroyed where pretty much the oil never got to cycle, never got clean, overheated, and basically cooked. We'll clamp this on again, again, being very careful not to get any of the teeth and of course making sure that we can actually press everything off. Just more chunks, just again, this, this fork went everywhere. It wasn't even a very big piece, but it's just all over. I'm just taking note here of how some of these pieces are assembled. Some of the interesting facts of how the, the teeth are offset. There's one less tooth on one of those retainers. 
checking some of our synchro wear here. This synchro is actually pretty good. It could probably go another 20,000 miles, but if you look underneath it on our hub assembly, we've got a lot more chunks of metal here. So we're going to have to pull all these out pretty much one by one, and I'm stacking them up on my arm just for the hell of it. Spraying a little bit of brake cleaner in there. We ended up going through and actually spending a couple hours just hosing all the kinds of fluids we have, WD-40, brake cleaner, compressed air to try and get some of that, that metal out. It really just takes so much time to get it to be clean. Now switching over to our center differential, we're going to go ahead and get these bearings off. Now this one was pretty much impossible that I found to get it any other way with the tools I had. So I took apart the roller bearing and then went ahead and used a kind of a puller in this sense to, to pull the, the race off. I did the same to the other side as well. So again, cutting and removing the roller bearings and then pulling off the rest of it. You do have to be careful to make sure that you don't snap anything because they, uh, they do break pretty easily. Just putting a little oil underneath the bearing help help it guide on a little bit easier. You want to make sure that you're pressing against the race when you push these on and not the actual bearing assembly itself. You will either have the tapered rollers fall off or you will break the bearing and basically destroy it and you'll end up being stuck again. And these ones, again, they're sometimes a little bit tricky on how you need to fit everything to make sure that you can press directly on the race itself. Sometimes you can't really get away with doing anything else other than pressing on the bearing and unless you have the right tool. In our case, we don't. Now we're actually going back onto the output shaft. And what we're doing is we're doing pretty much the same thing. We're pulling off these bearings. They're a little bit easier to get to. You can see how you have to kind of really snake it in there and keep it a little bit loose. You don't want to clamp on these teeth. You just want to get on the bearing itself. We're going to raise it up just a little bit to make it easier to reach. And we can press our new bearings on. Now this output shaft is where the center differential attaches to and that allows us to connect essentially the front output to the rear output, which allows us to have all wheel drive. So it's a very critical component, makes everything a lot more fun. So here we're using a magnet to go inside of the transmission and we're pulling out these chunks. You can see this rag back here is absolutely riddled with uh, these chunks and I continued that process for a couple hours. Now we're pressing our new bearing onto our input shaft side. This is the from the clutch housing side where our first gear is. Now we're pressing onto our intermediate shaft. Now this one's a real pain is getting the old races out. Sometimes they actually don't fit with the new roller bearings. We ended up having to weld one of them with a bar across it and then hammer it out. It was a real pain. Nothing else would work. Now you need to go ahead and hammer in your new races. You gotta be really careful with these. You don't wanna damage or scratch any of the surfaces. We're using a dead blow mallet, and then we're actually using the old race to help hammer it the rest of the way home. We're also punching out any seals that we have that are in the way, and again, making sure to get some of our other races while we're at it. You may have to get creative with some of these. We're also taking note of our old shims. They might be helpful later on, depending on how we need to shim the transmission. One of the fun things, we now get to put a new fresh coat of paint on this. All right, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can join us the next time when we reassemble our gear set with a few upgrades. Be sure to check out our Patreon too, where you can get early access to all new videos. Till next time, happy modding.